Welcome to 5th grade math with Mr. J. So in this video we are going to be getting into dividing decimals with decimal divisors. Now if you watched my last video it was dividing decimals with whole number divisors. And much like that video or process of dividing decimals by whole number divisors, it's the same long division process as any division problem. Okay, this one just takes a little extra step whenever you have a decimal divisor or a decimal outside number. It just takes a little extra step. But as long as you know the division process, you will be good to go. If you want to go check out whole number divisors first, dividing decimals by whole number divisors, if you miss that uh, video, I dropped the link to my instructional video down in the description. And then you can come back to decimal divisors. Um, I would have something to write without and write these out with me. I think that will be beneficial. So here we go with number one. We have 71 and 2 tenths divided by 2 tenths. Now if you remember from my whole number divisor videos, I said you should ask yourself a question before you start any division problem. And that question is, is my divisor whole? And remember, if your divisor is whole, you bring that decimal straight up. Well, in number one here, our divisor is not whole, so we do not bring our decimal straight up. What we do is we have to make our we have to make our divisor whole. We have to make it whole, and we move the decimal to do this. Okay, which is the same as multiplying by a power of ten. Moving the decimal once is like multiplying by ten moving it twice by 100, 3 times 1,000, 4 times 10,000, and so on. So for number 1 here, we would, we would have to move the decimal once, which is like multiplying by 10. Now, whatever you do to the outside, to the divisor, you have to do to the inside, or the dividend. So I move my decimal once here. So I literally draw those arrows out to show my movements, and then I rewrite my problem. My divisor is 2, and now I have 712 as my dividend. Doing this, moving that decimal, will put the decimal in the correct place for my quotient. So now I just go through my long division process. 7 divided by 2, well, 3 whole groups of 2 out of 7. 3 times 2 is 6. Subtract, I get 1, bring down my 1. 11 divided by 2 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. Subtract, I get 1, bring down this 2. And now 12 divided by 2, which is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. I get a clean cut 0 and a whole number answer here. So 356 would be my quotient. Okay, so to recap, Always check if your divisor is whole. If not, you need to make it whole. Do the same thing to the inside and outside, and then go through your long division process. So let's go to number two here. We have 49 and 6 tenths divided by 4 hundredths. Is my divisor whole? No, so I need to make it whole. And in this one, I need to move the decimal twice, which is the same as multiplying by 100. Whatever I do to the outside, I need to do to the inside. 1, 2. There's my decimal. Fill with a 0 here. So, rewrite my problem. 4 is my divisor, and 4,960 is my dividend. And now I just go through my long division process. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 times 4 is 4. Subtract, I get 0. Bring down that 9. 9 divided by 4 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. Subtract, I get 1. Bring down that 6. 16 divided by 4 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. Subtract, I get 0. And bring down this 0. And here is one of the most common mistakes when it comes to division. Because we have a 0 down here, we think we're done. But in reality, we are not done. We need to go all the way over to our lowest place value here, which is the ones place. We need to fill that spot with something. 
So you still have to think, you have to do zero divided by four. How many groups of four are in zero? Well, that can't happen, right? Zero divided by four is zero. So zero times four is zero. Subtract. Now we are done. We went all the way over. So our quotient would be 1,240. Number three, we have a 1 and 5 tenths as our divisor and 3 and 15 hundredths as our dividend. So is our divisor whole? No, it's in between 1 and 2. It has a whole number, right? It has the 1, but it's not an exact whole number. It's in between 1 and 2. So we need to multiply it by a power of 10. And in this one, we just need to move the decimal once, which is like multiplying by 10. Do the same thing to the inside. So now my decimal is in between the 1 and the 5, and I have a 15 as my divisor. So everything is set up for me now. Is my divisor now whole? Yes, I have a 15, so I can bring that decimal straight up. 31 divided by 15 is 2. 2 times 15 is 30. Subtract, I get 1. Bring down that 5. Now I have 15 divided by 15, which is 1. 1 times 15 is 15. Subtract, I get 0. 2 and 1 tenth. And then finally, number 4 here, we have 5 tenths and 125 as our dividend. Divisor is not whole, so I need to make it whole. Move the decimal once. That means on the inside, I need to move my decimal once. Remember, decimals are at the end of whole numbers, so it goes to the end. I move it once, fill with a zero. So I have five as my divisor and 1,250 as my dividend. Now I'm ready to go through my process. 12 divided by five is two. Two times five is 10. Subtract, I get two, bring down that five. 25 divided by five is five. Five times five is 25. Subtract, I get zero, bring down that zero. Remember, I need to go all the way over. I'm not done, my answer is not 25, so I need to do zero divided by five, which is zero. Zero times five is zero. Subtract, I get a zero. Now I'm done, I went all the way over to my lowest place value. My quotient or answer is 250. So that's, those are the basics to dividing decimals by decimal divisors. So now it's your turn to try some on your own. So head over to my mastery check. I dropped the link down in the description where you can try four on your own to see if you have it down. Thanks for watching.